Mmm, good. <laughs> now, I might repeat myself uh, from time to time, or maybe all the time, but uh, there's one thing I don't do, and uh, that is uh, I don't like the long way of doing anything. And uh, if you'll ever get any instructions from anybody on how to do infrared photography, you'll go, That's a nightmare. What they'll do is you'll see them mounting their camera on a tripod. And uh, what they'll do is they'll tell you to uh, compose and focus. And, uh, you know, once you've done that, then uh, you stick your camera in manual focus. So the next time you hit your shutter button, it's not going to focus. Because those infrared filters, uh, the 720 nanometer, the R72 Hoya, you can't see anything through them. You can see almost nothing. They're, they're basically totally dark. Your camera cannot meter or focus through them at all. So you got to throw your camera into manual mode. Obviously, you got to throw your camera into uh, into a manual, not autofocus. Throw it into manual, and then they'll tell you to screw the filter on. And when you can take that other shot, you got to take it off and redo it. I mean, total BS. Now here is infrared photography the simple way. Okay, I've been doing this for years, and here's here's a way to do it a hundred times quicker, almost literally a hundred times quicker. Okay. Mount your damn camera on your damn tripod, okay? Per, you know, like a lightweight one, like the Manfrotto b Free, something really lightweight. Whatever. Throw your camera into manual mode, throw your camera into a manual focus, okay? Now, oddly enough, your lens has these little markings up here that give you distances. Oh my god, they're there for a reason! Oh no! <laughs> yeah. Um... In uh, infrared photography, I'm always using rarely a 50, but always a 35 or 28, and typically a 35 millimeter. Now the distance, uh, distance difference between uh, infinity and like five feet, uh, uh, the throw, the lens throw, is next to nothing. So if I have uh, my aperture set somewhere around f8 or f11, all I have to do is just bring it to infinity and back it off a few millimeters, and everything's in. Okay, I mean, it's not like you're doing macro photography with infrared. Although you could, but well, most of it's landscape sort of stuff, right? 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 Okay. So, you leave the filter on the lens the whole time. Well, you can't see through it, so how are you going to compose and shoot? Easy! Okay, all I have to do is, your, okay, your camera's right here, okay, it's your eyeballs and your brain. All I have to do is just project my eye, I look at the scene, I can see what a 35 millimeter spread is, for example, right there. I'll point my camera, looking through my camera, I'll point it there where I roughly I think it is, and I'm always 90% 90, 90 accurate, more or less. You're going to have to uh, um, adjust your, uh, your aperture and your shutter speed again anyway, so here's the trick. Once you actually adjust your camera on your tripod, okay, right where you think it is, just look through the camera and see the scene, okay? You don't have to see through the viewfinder. Obviously, you can't see anything. You're going to throw... And, uh, I got my black cloth in my other bag over there. You're going to throw a black cloth over the viewfinder to keep stray light from coming in, okay? Or you can just put the cap on. I just use a black cloth. Big deal. And uh, take the shot, okay? Then you're going to check back here for your exposure. You're going to have to adjust it a stop or two or three one way or the other once you've got it dialed in because you're going to be walking around you're going to have to adjust your uh, exposure, you know, plus or minus three stops. You know, if the clouds are coming over, the, you know, the best time to take infrared photography, by the way, is uh, when uh, it's bright sunlight and uh, best for aesthetic effects when there's some nice uh, uh, puffy clouds out there. Um, so you're going to have to readjust your uh, exposure anyway. So all I have to do is just unlock my tripod head, and if I don't have my, uh, my composition perfect, then I'll just adjust it a little bit. I still don't have to see. I can see back here from the reference shot how I need to adjust my aperture and my shutter. Okay? And if my composition is slightly off, up or down, left or right, I'll just loosen the tripod and adjust it. And I'm always right on 99.9% .9 of the time on the second shot. You know, why do I need the composition? And I don't worry about the focus. I'm mean, talking about a 35 millimeter here. I'll just bring my lens to infinity and back it off of here and it's right there every time. Don't need to autofocus it. Don't even need to focus it when it's on the tripod. It's either taking filters on and off. Screw that. Just leave the filter on there. When you get out of your car to take shots, screw on the filter, throw it in manual mode, throw it in manual focus. 
Stick your camera on your tripod, leave it there. When you go around, just pack your camera on your tripod. I mean, I know that's kind of ungainly, but deal with it. I mean, that's what I did all day long. That's what I've been doing for years. Simple. So simple. I can take far, 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 far more shots than other people can. You know, I'm going to compose the shot and I'm going to focus it. Okay. And then I'm going to screw my face. The hell with that. That's ridiculous. Ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. So, manual mode, manual focus, throw it to infinity, back off a hair, okay? Dial in your exposure, depending on what you have your ISO set at. Depends on your camera, how IR sensitive it is. So you know you're right there. Take the shot, check it, check your composition, adjust your composition, loosen your tripod, adjust it up or down, left or right, okay? And then adjust your exposure. Take the next shot, boom, you got it. You know, sitting there and taking the filter on and off, checking your composition and focusing. I could do that back here. Okay? It's kind of reminiscent to the old days. You know, you take a Polaroid, you couldn't see anything uh, you know, until you took a Polaroid. It's like, well, okay, I need to adjust my exposure. I need to take it over here. Left. This is a lot quicker this way. Okay? Try to save you a lot of the... This makes infrared photography so easy. So once you got your camera on your tripod and you screw your filter on, all you have to do is just, at each and every scene, you're going to have to do this anyway if you do it the slow way. So this is much faster. Just uh, take the shot. Obviously, as I said, throw the cloth over the viewfinder. If you want to stick your cap on there, that's fine. What difference does it make either way? I just throw it on there, take it off, throw it on. Easier actually to leave the cap on there. However, I didn't bring it today, but I usually got a black cleaning cloth in my bag. So, anyway, uh, that's the uh, quick and easy way to do infrared photography. And uh, it's so damn fast. It's just damn fast. Why isn't anybody else mentioning that? It's ridiculous. Why did I go through all those stupid steps at the 35 millimeter? You know what the depth of field on 35 millimeter is past like four feet? I mean, it's basically everything. Why do I need to sit there and focus? I can see through the camera. I know what my composition is. I know what the spread, the angle of view of 35 is. All I have to do is just see what I want to take a picture of, point my camera right in the middle of that, and I'll be 90% there or more, sometimes 100%. Actually, about half the time, 100%. So, then all I have to do is take a test shot. Readjust my exposure, my shutter. Easy. God, people make things hard. It's absolutely ridiculous. Anyway, thanks for watching. Catch you later. Bye.